Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I will show you how you can set up your Zorin OS 15.3 installation for gaming and this will allow you to play both native and Windows developed games. Now if you're not familiar with Zorin OS, it is another Ubuntu based distribution that uses the 1804 release repository but it also supplements it with newer software and drivers straight from their own repositories. So this means that the end user will have a stable system but without any outdated software for the most part. So step one is to install the latest GPU drivers. So when you first boot off the Zorin OS ISO, you have several options. Now, out of all the options that are available, there's only really two that are relevant for this video. And that would be the first option, which is try or install Zorin OS, and the third option, which is try or install Zorin OS modern NVIDIA drivers. Now these will install the latest AMD or NVIDIA drivers respectively, as well as enable them once the overall installation of Zorin OS is finished. Uh, one other thing just to note as well, when you get to the point where it asks you to choose to install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, as well as digital media formats, make sure that's tipped if you want to be using the NVIDIA drivers. If you don't do that, you'll have to manually install the NVIDIA drivers as noted on their support page, which, like I said, isn't too difficult, but it's just one extra step that you didn't need to do. So step two is to install Steam and Lutris. So when we're gaming on Linux, there are two main applications that you need to install that allow you to play games. The first is Steam, and by extension, Steam with Proton enabled, as that will allow you to play games that are found in your Steam library that are both native to Linux as well as developed on Windows. Now this is, takes the assumption, of course, that the Windows game you're trying to play doesn't use intrusive DRM or any form of anti-cheat. Well, not actually any form, only certain types of anti-cheat. So things such as Easy, Easy Anti-Cheat and Battleye are two examples. You'll probably find that that's really the only reason why a Windows developed game will not typically work on Linux. There are some exceptions, but you tend to find that, find that that's the reason why. Now, if you want a great reference point for checking how your Steam library is compatible with Linux, then I recommend you check out ProtonDB, as that will allow you to effectively search for a game and see how many people have reported it working, whether they need to do any tweaks, and uh, yeah, it just gives you a general idea of how that particular game is going to run. One, one word of warning, just take their rating system with a, a very, very huge grain of salt but instead just focus on the reports that people have put. So the second application that we need to install is Lutris. Now, Lutris will allow you to play your Windows developed games on Linux that are not typically found in the Steam Store. So we're talking games from Battle.net, Epic Game Stores, Origin, Uplay, and so on and so forth. Again, just bear in mind that the same restrictions of DRM and certain types of anti-cheat software do apply here as well. Now the good news is that both Steam and Lutris can be installed straight from the software application that comes with Zorin OS. In fact, it is just as simple as searching for what you want, need to install and then clicking the big old install button when it appears. So in my particular case, I've already installed it ahead of time. But uh, yeah, it is literally a matter of just clicking install, let it go through the motions, and there you go, you're all set up. Just something to note on the Lutris installation, you will find that it will install Wine and Wine Tricks. Now this is perfectly normal because both of those are actually dependencies for Lutris to function correctly. And the good news about installing it through Zorin OS's software store is that you would typically need to install these manually. But in this case, it's all done as one, one big job. So the first time you load up Steam on Linux, you'll find that it will only allow you to install games that have native Linux versions or a very small selection of games that have been whitelisted as a Valve as compatible with Proton. Now if you're unsure what Proton is, it is effectively a Valve's compatibility layer that is based on Wine, and this is a piece of software that allows Windows developed games to work on Linux. Now it is entirely possible to get all your Steam library to work with Proton, you just have to enable it beforehand. So you do that by going to Steam at the top left, go to Settings, then Steam Player, and as long as you've got enable Steam Play for all of the titles ticked, click OK and then reboot Steam. And now this will allow you to install pretty much any game you've got in your particular library. 
So step four is to enable eSync. Now, since Zorin OS is based off the 1804 release of Ubuntu, it will mean that eSync is not enabled out of the box. Now, if you're not familiar with what eSync is, in simplistic terms, it is a piece of technology that reduces the wine overhead when you run games that rely heavily on the, GP, uh, the CPU. So by enabling eSync, you can in theory improve performance in those types of games. Now a very quick way of checking if you've got eSync enabled on your system is open up a terminal window and type in the following. So it is ulimit space dash capital H and lowercase n. Now if that doesn't return a figure that is 524.288 or higher, or greater rather, then eSync is not enabled. Now in my particular case, I've installed it ahead of time, but I'll show you how you can manually enable it for yourself. So we need to open up a file explorer, go to other locations, computer, etc. And we're looking for a system D folder. System D, and there's two for two config files we need to edit. The first one is system config, and the second one is user. Now both of these are system files, so we will need root access in order to, to edit them. So if we open up a terminal and type in the following: sudo nano system dot config. Type in our password and it will open up that file in the terminal. And there's one record we need to amend, which is this one here, default limit no file. We need to amend that to 524288. And also remember to remove the hash at the beginning to enable that. Once we've done that, we can press Control and X, which will save it. So we need to do the same thing for the user config. So once again, scroll down to the bottom and change the default limit no file to 524288. Save that. And all we need to do now is reboot our system and eSync will be enabled on this on your system. So at this point your system is all set up and ready so you can play your Windows and your Linux games, but there are some optional performance tweaks you can do as well. The first one is to enable Feral Game Mode. Now what Feral Game Mode does is that when it's launched, it will effectively put your CPU and your GPU in performance modes, which can help with performance of certain games. It's probably more beneficial on laptops or anything that has the option to scale down the clock speed of your CPU. Now, Game Mode is actually pre-installed on Zorin OS, so it is just a matter of requesting the Game Mode, of which you can find all the information to do that on Feral Interactive's GitHub page. The second performance tweak we can do is to install a custom Linux kernel that has the F-Sync patches. Now F-Sync basically improves on E-Sync which we discussed earlier and once again will further reduce the wine overhead of CPU bound games. My recommendation for this purpose is to use Licorice since Licorice is designed for Ubuntu or Debian based distributions. So, with that, your installation of Zorin OS is now all set up so you can play your both your native and your Windows developed games. Either way, as always, thank you very much for watching, and if you did find this video helpful, please do consider leaving a like, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.